Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Teddy boys. Well, my ambition is to be rich. Well, I mean, if you got money, you got everything, haven't you? Well, I don't suppose I've got an ambition to start as I am, but more money. Now, Mike's a teddy boy, and teddy boys aren't popular with the public. Teddy boys, I don't like them at all. I don't like their style of dress. It's just to prove what they are, and they're very ignorant. I think if their parents watched over them a bit better when they were smaller, they might grow up to be good citizens. Is this like the chavs of the 1950s? I blame their parents. I'll give you an instance of teddy boys. I was going to the chemist the other day for medicine for my children. It was rather a deserted street and there was about six of them coming along and they thought they'd have a go at me. But I singled out the ringleader and I give him a real good punching on the nose. And I don't think he'll ever attempt to interfere with anybody else in future. Junior gangster, she calls them. But some surely just like to look tough, not act tough. Take Mike. He's 17. If you ask him why he wears Edwardian clothes, he says, Well, it's definitely smarter. It definitely attracts the birds. I mean, when you put it on, it kind of gives you a, a superior feeling, a confidence, like. And people look at you. About this acting tough, I mean, it's no good creeping down the, down the road, door to door, all meek and humble, because the fellows are just going to say, well, look at that punk, let's have him. Every night after work, he's an improver welder, Mike waits for his friend Pat, sometimes under the walls of a bombed church. Waiting there, I said to him, I'd noticed he often talked about Africa. I said, had he always wanted to be a welder? No, see, when I was a nipper, I went to some grammar school. And I used to read these travel books, and I was reading one, and I goes and I see the geography master, and I chat to him about it. And he told me some idea he had about a kind of traveling hospital, you know, a caravan with a couple of doctors and nurses, and taking all these rare drugs to the outlying villages. That's what I wanted to do, but, well, that was when I was a kid. That was nice. Now, after all, it isn't too late. He could still go to Africa. But say that to him, and he only replies, yeah, I know, but who wants to go to Africa now? Now I'm happy as I am. They enjoy talking, Pat and Mike. They argue and discuss for hours. Pat, for example, has views on religion. Now me, I believe there is a God and there is such a place as heaven. But then what puts me off of going to church is that you see people come home from church, get drunk, start swearing, and they've got the church to look at you and say, Oh, look at that teddy boy. I'm sure it goes well when he dies. Pat's also... Good point. ...got views about girls. His ideal girl, he says, is a big, dozy blonde. Both Pat and Mike have what they call steadies. Pat's friend, Marion, Maureen, Mike's girl. Girls are the number one topic of conversation. And then, of course, there's clothes, appearance. They call men who wear conventional clothes peasants. On certain days, they do certain things. Three nights a week are reserved for their steadies. Pat and Mike often discuss... Crazy how people... I love watching British Pathé. Pathé, sorry. That's not British Path. Um, I love watching just older footage of people, not just some special event, but just like how people acted. And it shows you how people are just um, a lot more predictable than, than, I, than I used to. Like, people at the end of the day have the same kind of urges, thoughts, processes. I'm not saying everyone's the same. You know what I mean? Just, it, it's, it's fascinating just seeing how People are just molded in the environment they are, but have the same general instincts. They don't much like the idea of it, but are afraid they'll come to it in the end. Ten years' time, what would I be like? Well, I suppose I'll be married. I don't want to get married, but I suppose I will. A couple of kids working for a living, finishing at our bars five, going home. <laughs> On certain nights, non-girl nights, their design for living calls for at least one visit with the gang to a pin table saloon.
Usually, Pat and Mike stick to their own gang and district. And when they do go outside, say to the teenage canteen at the Elephant and Castle, they're careful not to stare at the local girls. Next door to the canteen is a pub. This might have made the idea of a teenage canteen unworkable. But the publican is a man of understanding. What well, my opinion is, Teddy boys, they're all right. They're not so bad them. as they're painted. I don't believe in all the press talk you read about. It's a build-up for the papers. The Teddy boy today, in my opinion, is he gets good money and he dresses himself accordingly. I have no trouble with them in here. They come in here for a drink. I've told them they're not allowed to drink intoxicating liquors for the simple reason I can't discern who's 20 and who's 16. Pat finds his job a bit monotonous. Just a very rational human being, and I like him. Who's 20 and who's 16. Pat finds his job a bit monotonous, but he doesn't go out and find something better. He says there aren't any interesting jobs for boys of his age. So, in the meantime, says Pat, make the most of your boyhood. Lark around. Not very serious. But ordering a new suit, that is serious. And serious too is a Saturday afternoon visit to the barbers. Here we Pat's go. mother likes his hairstyle and suit. His stepfather too isn't against his way of dressing. But Mike's mother and father don't approve at all. I chat to my dad and he's a pretty brainy guy. I mean, he's read Plato's theories and all that caper. But don't think I'm him. See, he's dead against me wearing the old Ed Ward in. He reckons it looks stupid. But that's a load of crumb. We don't. We just walk around and have a giggle. But he won't see that. Well, frankly, I don't know what to say. The boy's got me worried. He doesn't seem to belong to the world, the world that I live in. He seems to be living in a dream. I've noticed this about the boy ever since we returned to London, just after the war. During the war, he, he was like other children, he was evacuated. But he was perhaps more fortunate than others than he was evacuated to a place where he had woods and fields and he could run about free all day. And then he returned to London. And I noticed the look of puzzlement on the boy's face when he saw the streets, pavements, houses. He looked like a trapped animal. I think that's the impression that I get about that boy, that he is a trapped animal, trying to find some way out. He just doesn't know. I've tried to talk to him, to try and find out what it is he's looking for. I can't find out. <laughs> it's, I so wish that we had, um, I, I think that people in decades and centuries of, from now are going to have such a greater grasp of the human condition because of all of the, the you, you can't do it justice in writings, and in surviving writings and in sculptures or paintings. And it really makes you realize how like, you can study people so much easier, more easily, and, and get a feel when, when you can see videos and, peop and audio of people talking, even more so with colored uh, video, you, you can just understand life a lot more. And you, you can't do that in just, um, you know, stories. Uh, or even historical uh, writings. Uh, Mike, his father says, is intelligent, kind, and likable, but full of contradictions. One of them being, I think, that he says he's happy, but somehow doesn't look happy. Still, he says he is, and he denies that there's anything wrong when you ask him, what's the matter? Nothing. I keep on telling you, there's nothing up with me. Everybody's saying, why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Why should I? I've got my mates, I've got my clothes, I can go out and have a laugh. I keep on telling you, I'm happy.
that's fascinating. I love watching this stuff. Um, yeah, uh, would appreciate any comments, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Would love if you liked and subscribed, and hopefully uh, you'll join me next time in another video. Bye, guys.